We're getting a look at just released videotape of the accident that burned Michael Jackson's scalp 25 years ago. CBS News national correspondent Hattie Kaufman is in Los Angeles with that. Hattie, good morning. Good morning, Maggie. To take you back, the album Thriller had just come out. Jackson was at the top of his career. Now, you can tell from the video that the burns were very serious, but amazingly, he kept on dancing even as his hair burned. A warning, the image could be upsetting. This video from Us Magazine shows the moment Michael Jackson's life changed. He was filming a Pepsi commercial in 1984. In the first take, everything goes smoothly. But watch the sixth take. The pyrotechnics ignite while he's still at the top of the stairs. Incredibly, he continues to dance for a full 10 seconds, even as flames burn away his hair and scalp. J. Randy Terraborelli was in the audience that night. Michael went down, and then everybody went down on top of him, and you knew that something had occurred. And then people started saying, he's been burned, he's been burned. The severity of the burns are visible at the top of his head as he's rushed off the stage. It's believed the second and third degree burns on his scalp and face led to his addiction to painkillers. This was when he decided it was okay, and not only okay, but necessary to take pain medication. Undergoing Almost a decade later, the pop star acknowledged his medication. drug addiction. This medication was initially prescribed to see the excruciating pain that I was suffering after recent reconstructive surgery on my scalp. Now, pain medication is playing a pivotal role in its death investigation. Detectives removed bottles of the anesthesia propofol, also known as Diprovan, from Jackson's home. Officials are focusing on several doctors, including Dr. Conrad Murray, who was with Jackson when he died. If the police can establish that Dr. Murray or any other doctor provided Diprovan to Michael Jackson in his home, outside of, the, outside of a hospital capacity, then the crime would be negligent homicide. 25 years ago, fans were not in informed of the severity of the accident. Instead, the most famous image of the day was Michael waving from a gurney. It's only now, after his death, that his horrific injuries can be fully grasped. It was after that accident Jackson began wearing hats to hide the scars and to take painkillers, sedatives, and finally the anesthetics that are at the heart of today's investigation into his death. Maggie? CBS's Hattie Kaufman. Hattie, thank you. In his new book, Unmasked, The Final Years of Michael Jackson, author Ian Halperin says that nobody feared for Jackson's life more than the singer himself. And Ian joins us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning, Maggie. This is a book that, that has a title about his, his death, but you actually started writing it a while back and you just changed the title after he died. Well, I first got involved in the case back in 2005 after he was acquitted of the child molestation charges. I was furious. I thought we had another O.J. Simpson type case on our hands with high profile lawyers getting a celebrity off the hook. So I wanted to really um, let the world know that Michael is a child molester, but four years later, thousands of interviews and documents later, I conclude 100% Michael Jackson never molested children, and he was just a victim of extortion attempts and people trying to bring him down. And you say he was a victim of that in, in more ways than one, including uh, in his drug addiction, which has been talked about since he died. Let's look at this video again when we believe the drug addiction was born. The fire happens during the shooting of the Pepsi commercial, and for the first time we're really seeing just how bad it was. He keeps dancing, apparently not even aware that his scalp is on fire. He spins around and the flames go out, but then it hits him and people tackle him, and we get a clear view of his burned scalp. From what you've research from your interviews with people who were close to him from your dealings with Michael Jackson how bad this did this addiction that was born in this moment get well this was definitely the start but it didn't have to become a uh, dependency I, I, I don't look at Michael Jackson as being an addict I look at him being dependent because he had all these illnesses and he needed them to live without the medication I don't think he could have survived but this incident back in 1983, I think it was the perfect opportunity for doctors to take advantage of and to get him to become dependent on prescription drugs and to up the level of the drugs he was on. And that's where I find the injustice is. These doctors, I hope, are investigated thoroughly by authorities and are brought to justice because Michael Jackson deserved a much better fate. Let's face it, he's the world's greatest entertainer, uh, one of the greatest humanitarians I've ever encountered. Michael Jackson was not given justice in his life, and I hope, he, I hope the people who enabled him are brought to justice. You make some explosive claims in your book. You say he may have been anorexic, uh, he was gay, 
a lot of people at home will say everybody's coming out and talking about Michael Jackson pretending like they're experts with all due respect what makes you an expert? How can we trust what you're saying when your sources in the book are not even named? Well, a lot of sources are named in the book. Some aren't because the two those main people, sources, the confidence that you talk well, about. Well, they sign confidentiality agreements, but I will prove everything in my book easily. The people coming out of the woodwork now, they've only come out since Michael's death. Everyone has known I've been working on this book and film for years and that my book will be the definitive definitive account of what happened to Michael during his final years and also have 300 hours of footage to back everything up. So uh, if people want to be detractors, I urge them to read the book first before making any judgment. And you have knowledge that we may not have heard uh, the last of Michael Jackson's final wishes. You think there's another will? I'll predict today uh, on your show that we definitely, this is not the last we've heard and I, I think there will be people challenging the authenticity of the 2002 will in the coming, in the near future. How do you know? I, I have sources in this camp. All right. Ian Halperin, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Pleasure.